Hi again, everyone, and welcome to OT The Hockey Show. I'm Colin Zappia. We're standing here inside the Canadian Tire Centre as we watch a game between members of Soldier On and the Sens alumni, which now includes both Chris Phillips and Daniel Alfredson. We've got a busy show ahead for you, which will include chats with John Tavares, as well as Columbus Blue Jackets captain Nick Foligno, and we'll also get you caught up with some organizational changes the Sens have recently made. We'll get things started off, as always, with our Sens profile, and this week, it's Chris Kelly. Pass for TJ Oshie missed. Now Kelly has it shorthanded ahead to Pius. Tom Pius works in. Pius sitting with Kelly at the back. Headshot and it's good. Toronto, Ontario native Chris Kelly is in his second stint with the Ottawa Senators after signing a one-year $900,000 contract this past July. Although there are some new faces since Kelly left, it's safe to say he's happy to be back in the nation's capital. That feels good. Um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of new faces, uh, a few familiar ones, which has, has made the, the transition pretty, pretty easy and pretty seamless, but uh, at the end of the day, it's still a new team. And, you know, you're still trying to feel your way out and, and uh, try to figure guys out and get to know them uh, on the ice and off the ice, and uh, I think they're trying to do the same with me. It's any player's dream to be able to hoist Lord Stanley over their head. Kelly now comes back to Ottawa with some hardware after winning the Stanley Cup back with the Bruins in 2011. It was uh, you know, obviously a special time. Um, you know, being, getting the opportunity to go to such a, a good team and being able to win the, that first year and you know having that connection with that team and is obviously something that um, I've been able to, to cherish and, and continue those you know special you know friendships and, and relationships to, uh, throughout the last you know five five and a half years. In his first stint with Ottawa, Kelly was a young, up-and-coming NHLer looking up to key veterans on the team. After playing with the Bruins and winning a Stanley Cup, the roles are reversed a bit. Kelly now being known as the veteran, with young players looking up to him, and he's happy about that. Uh, I like the way people are using the word veteran opposed to old. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, when when I was here, there was you know. Some older guys. My first year, we had you know Chara, Alfredson, Redden, Hasek, um, you know Phillips. Uh, yeah, there there are so many you know great leaders and people that that taught us younger guys how to conduct themselves on and off the ice. And um, you know, I've been very fortunate to to be around such you know not only great hockey players but great people that that treated people with respect. Um, you know, conduct themselves in a manner that <clears throat> never embarrass the organization, and I think that's what you try to pass along. Is uh, yeah, you know, we're treated uh, very well on and off the ice, uh, being an NHL hockey player. But at the end of the day, it's you know, you want to treat people with respect. Um, you you want to conduct yourselves in a manner that uh, is going to represent the organization in the best way uh, possible. One thing that the Bruins and the Senators have in common is the passion of their fans towards the game of hockey. Chris Kelly feels that it's important to have fans show their passion towards their team and the game. I, you know, I've been pretty lucky that both places are passionate fans, which is, you know, at the end of the day, what, what you want. Um, they'll let you know when you're not playing well and they'll let you know when you've done something well. And, you know, I, I enjoy that. I think you have people that are knowledgeable about the game uh, in, in both cities and want their team to succeed. And um, at the end of the day, like I said, they're, they're passionate fans that, uh, you know, want to see the best for, for their, their team. Another passionate aspect of the Senators is head coach Guy Boucher. And Kelly is appreciative of the structure Boucher has given the team and he feels that it's really making the best out of the players. You know, Guy's passionate, which is, you know, as a player, um, great. Uh, you want a passionate coach, you want someone that, that wants to succeed just as much as, as you do. Um, and, you know, Guy's come in with, with a system 
put in place that he expects his players to adapt to and execute uh, every day, not only in games but in practice as well. And I, I think it's been it's been great for the group to have that that structure put in place, and you're seeing you know guys thriving uh, under that that system uh, with with structure. We're you know very structured based people. Uh, we're told to be. At, Places at certain times for meetings and uh, you know planes to catch and buses to catch and things like that um, it should be no different uh, on the ice. Chris Kelly will be looking to take his veteran experience and use it not only to help the young stars of this team get better, but to also help the team win games. It is sure great to see Chris Kelly back in a Senators uniform. For OT the Hockey Show, I'm Tyler McDonald. Ryan Murray has worn many hats with the Ottawa Senators and was recently their first inductee into the Ring of Honor. In this week's You Said It, we get your thoughts on Brian Murray's impact on the organization. I mean, what hasn't this guy done for this Ottawa Senators? General manager, coach, got us to a cup final, built this team. Uh, he's been a constant professional through his health problems. Um, I got nothing but good things to say about the guy, so I'm uh, really proud of him. And um, go, go, Brian Murray, I guess, right? It's fantastic. Couldn't be a better guy. And he's uh, since day one, he's been completely transparent, and uh, he's shared his journey. And uh, great fight for uh, Brian and the uh, fight against cancer. Brian Murray was really awesome for this uh, organization. He really, uh, really did a lot of good. Whether he's GM or coach, I think he, I think he did a lot of great things. Uh, yeah, he seems to be really a big part of the Ottawa community, which is really awesome. Um, I think it's you know a great a great thing for Ottawa. So, I think he's done a lot of amazing stuff for the community. Oh, definitely, he's uh, made a great contribution on the ice and off the ice. Uh, I definitely think he, it's uh, well deserved for sure. Yeah, I would say the same. He's been a leader for very long, and uh, he really deserves this honor. And I'll be happy to watch it for sure. I think it's a great honor for him because he's done so much for the organization. I don't think the Sens would be where they are today without Brian Murray. Uh, it's great that he's a local guy from Shawville. I'm glad that he could come here and help the Sens get to where they are and hopefully get to where we want them to be in the future winning the Stanley Cup. Great um, uh, local piece of Senators uh, tradition from the region and um, you know many, many good years of uh, contribution to the team. What do you think of Brian Murray? Uh, Nice guy. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool person. I think he's great. Great spokesperson for the community. It's nice to have somebody local. And, uh, of course, for the team, I think he did a great job drafting, developing players. And uh, looking forward to seeing him inducted. Usually at this time of the year, the changes are happening on the ice, but recently the Ottawa Senators made a big change off it. In the front office, gone is founding father, serial leader, and in as new president and CEO is Tom Anselmi. Our Elizabeth Zogalis was at the press conference and brings us all the details. A new president and CEO has been named by the Ottawa Senators organization. Tom Anselmi will take over the duties of Cyril Leader, who has stepped down after 25 years in the organization. He comes at a key moment in the organization with the redevelopment of LeBreton Flats and a new downtown arena. We have to move. I mean, these kind of things don't happen overnight like LeBreton. Uh, we need to reinvigorate the brand. We need to do actually reposition things and rebrand. Uh, there's a ton of work to do. And, you know, Searle was here for 25 years. We came to a crossroads and it was simply time for a change. Anselmi is best known for his work with Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, where he spent nearly two decades and was responsible for the construction of the Air Canada Centre. 
You know, I think when you're the CEO of an organization like this, you, uh, you, you're responsible for everything, which is, uh, and I kind of look at it like the business today, uh, optimizing the organization so we're ready for what this future is all about. Uh, B, maximizing the business today so that, uh, so that until things change, we're doing the best we can. And, and you know, we've got a terrific hockey club and uh, an outdoor game and a game in Sweden and things to start setting us up for next year. And that becomes kind of the short-term opportunity and the arena is more of a long-term opportunity. Uh, build the best arena in the world. And I don't necessarily mean the biggest and the most expensive and glitziest, but the best hockey experience for our fans and for our players. Uh, and then ultimately win the Stanley Cup and grow the business. And, you know, if you do that in the next five years, that's been a good run. Owner Eugene Melnick says Anselmi's experience in construction and development influenced his decision to appoint him as president and CEO. You know, we want to see uh, everything succeed here. The fan experience the players, the, um, all of the stakeholders we have. But I'm more looking out, uh, really, for the next 10 years. Who's going to do all this stuff? Prior to Anselmi's work with Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, he is also credited with the development of the Sky Dome, now Rogers Centre, as well as Vancouver's Rogers Arena. He will be expected to use that experience and vision here in the nation's capital. You know, I spent 17 years on the other side of the Battle of Ontario and, uh, and I said uh, part of what I believe in is really knowing who you are and what you're good at and finding your niche. And you know, this will never be Montreal and this will never be Toronto, but nobody else can be Ottawa and the nation's capital and that kind of thing. And that's the sort of uh, spirit of the brand that I think uh, is an opportunity that I see, I see growth in. Um, but I really don't, uh, I, I don't have any preconceived notions. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm personally all about, you know, it's about organizational excellence, about, it's about doing your best, it's about being the best experience you can be for your fan, it's about being a great place to work and those kind of things that are the basics of how I like to lead. And uh, I don't know to what extent that all exists here, but we'll find out. And I want to just, you know, my job is to, you know, A, make sure this organization is the absolute best it can be uh, and to take advantage of this this uh, hockey club that we've got right now and this arena that we've got right now and B, start setting it up for this future that's going to unfold, which is going to change the community, change the organization, change everything. And uh, that's a pretty exciting opportunity. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty neat thing. It's going to be spectacular for this community and uh, you know, for what is a great, albeit different, hockey market than those, the other two I referenced. For OT The Hockey Show, I'm Elizabeth Ogalis. We're here with John Tavares and John, uh, a shorter summer for you, I guess. Did it change, uh, did your training change at all leading into this? Yeah, I think, you, you know, you try to assess uh, your season uh, in the past and, um, you know, you know what felt good and where you can get better, how you're feeling physically if you are uh, have anything lingering or nagging, nagging injury-wise and, and then, you know, you want to try to approach things the right way. So, um, you know, for me it was just important to get uh, – uh, to get started somewhat early, but to make sure that it was still really a recovery uh, type of uh, phase early on and just trying to recuperate from the season past and had a, a long season and obviously went uh, into the second round. So, uh, But then uh, obviously wanted to amp it up in August and, and really wanted to be hitting my stride, um, you know, coming into Labor Day. So um, for sure you uh, assess those things and, and, and then kind of form a game plan on how you want to approach the summer. What's the level of excitement for you personally throwing on the Team Canada jersey again and, and doing it in front of the, uh, the home country? Yeah, it's special. I, I was, got to do it here in Ottawa at the World Juniors and uh, it was a remarkable tournament. It was an, uh, an amazing atmosphere and at that age it's uh, you know, really mind-blowing to uh, be part of something like that and uh, something I'll never forget. And, you know, now you get to play on, on, on probably arguably the, the hardest team to make in hockey and, and feel fortunate to have that opportunity and play for my country uh, at home and in my hometown. I think uh, it's a great great opportunity. I'm, I'm really excited about that. And, and uh, uh, you don't want to let these opportunities slip. You know, your window's uh, uh, small to play for Canada, especially with all the, the talent that Canada produces uh, each and every year. You talked about the history of Team Canada, of course, playing in the World Juniors. Is there a moment, maybe when you were growing up, uh, that stands out for you on the international uh, level? Yeah, I, um, I mean, 02 was something special. Uh, watching the guys in Salt Lake and, uh, you know, looked up to so many of them and Joe Sackick, Steve Eiserman, uh, Mario Lemieux, and uh, 
you know, you just think about how cool that would be to be a part of something like that. And um, and then I remember in 2010, it was my rookie year, and watching uh, uh, watching a lot of the guys in this locker room win uh, uh, win gold on home soil, and just that atmosphere, and then the support, and and uh, really how great the whole tournament was. Uh, not just uh, uh, the journey Team Canada had, but uh, those are special moments. And best on best hockey is something uh, we don't get very often, uh, probably not enough. And uh, when you get these type of tournaments, they're always special. John, thanks for doing this. Uh, best of luck. Thank you. Well, lots of things happening here in Ottawa Senators land. We already told you about the big organizational change they made. We had a ring of honor ceremony and a player trade. Here to bring you all the updates is our Sens News. It was a busy few days in the nation's capital. First up, the Ottawa Senators paid tribute to former head coach and general manager Brian Murray inducting him into the Ring of Honor at the CTC. Murray led the Senators as their bench boss to the Stanley Cup Final in 2007, then took over as the general manager into 2016. The 74-year-old Charlotte native is still with the organization as a senior advisor. The man who took over the GM duties from Brian Murray, Pierre Dorian, was very busy. Earlier, he announced a four-year contract extension to Sens forward Zach Smith. Smith is coming off a career year last season with 25 goals and 36 points. Dorian wasn't finished there. On January 24th, he acquired forward Tommy Wingles from the San Jose Sharks. Wingles went on to score in his very first game with the Sens. He's excited to get a fresh start in Ottawa. Very exciting. You know, I know a couple guys here and, and to join a team that's a, a skilled, that plays the way they do here. Um, that has the identity that this team does. It's very exciting, so um, very happy to be here. Excited that uh, we play tomorrow and, and ready to get going here. And Even though Wingles is happy to be in Ottawa, it's always tough for a player to be traded for the very first time. I don't know if it stings. I, I, I think it, it's bittersweet. You know, it's it's the only thing you know. It's the only organization you're with. It's the team that drafted you, That the team that groomed you through uh, you, you know, your development years, you know, you play in the minors with them, you, you go through all that with the same core group of players. So it, it's certainly um, a lot of mixed emotions, you know, a lot of, of friendships that um, you've made over the years, a lot of good friends, um, people within the organization. So it's tough to say goodbye to them. So what can the Ottawa Senator fans expect from their newest forward? I like to play a physical, aggressive, um, speed game. You know, I like the four check hard. I, I like to chip in with some goals and, and I think that's kind of the identity they have here. You know, they like to play fast, um, play well defensively, don't cheat for offense, but uh, you know, try to score goals. So it, it's exciting to come into a, a, a team that has that identity, you know, a team that has the personnel that they do here, you know, players that move the puck like they do. Um, it's a well built team and, and you know I'll try to add uh, you know what I can to that. For Sens News, I'm Dave Davis. NHL players are creatures of habit. I found that out back in 1994 when I had a chance to spend a week with the Edmonton Oilers. Bill Ranford, well, you couldn't talk to him on game day. So we went to the Sens. What are some of your superstitions? Ask the Sens is brought to you by Gabriel Pizza. I mean, I never really had anything too crazy. I don't even really remember what they were. It was just things I would do in my routine more than anything. But there was uh, a goalie I played with in junior hockey who, uh, would, would stay dressed in his suit up until about 15 minutes before the game and throw his chest protector in the shower before every game and he couldn't even, we'd do warm-ups as a team and he refused to turn right so he'd do a almost like a 270 degree turn left if he had to go right so it was definitely, he run into some interesting people along the way and um, a lot of superstitions that you see over the years. I'm sure I have a few that I don't know if they're superstitions or just kind of routines, I guess. Uh, I do the same warm-up before games and things like that. Um, if it doesn't happen, it's not the be-all, end-all. Um, 
you know, I sit beside someone in the in the room and he puts in new laces and has to have them tied a certain way and things like that. And um, but superstitious, routine things. I played with uh, with another guy that had to tap you before uh, you couldn't tap him, and uh, he had to be the last one to tap someone. Uh, it was just weird things, but uh, no, no real. I'm sure there are worse ones, but uh, another guy, I think he had a, a, a problem, but he wore the same socks, uh, like, and they had whole, tons of holes in them, uh, but whatever worked. Or that you, uh, do you have any superstitions no, about I hockey? Mean, no, that was just trying to have a little respect for our training staff and not leave everything a mess in my stall. I'm not too, with my gear, I'm not very superstitious. I'll do whatever. Do you have any superstitions around hockey, not even related to gear? Uh, maybe more routines, you know, in terms of what I'll eat and and, and what I'll drink before a game and all that kind of stuff. But I don't really have any weird rituals that some players do have. I just, I find it'll make me crazy if I keep doing stuff like that. So I just keep it pretty simple. Not really. Um, very routine. So if you consider staying to your routine as superstition, then I guess I am. But um, no, I, I don't do anything in particular. I just have the same routine every game day. So routine is what you eat when you sleep, that kind of thing? Yeah, I would. I, I show up to the rink at 4 o'clock for a 7 o'clock game, I cut down a new stick and tape a new stick every game, um, shower, a kind of a hot shower before every game, just uh, relax and um, stretch, and, you know, everything in a certain order at a certain time and that's about it. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have any crazy superstitions, uh, you know, some, some guys do, and, uh, but uh, I don't have anything crazy going on, I think uh, you can drive yourself, drive yourself nuts, I think, if you have too many things to do, or but uh, I'm not that guy. But uh, uh, some guys have different things going on. So you say you don't have too many crazy ones. What do you have that you do beforehand? <sighs> Nothing really. I just have the same kind of warm-up routine. Uh, I do that, and you know, I put my right skate on. I think it's just because it, it feels uh, wrong if I don't. So it's just uh, that's just a little thing. But uh, I don't have too many. I've actually worked pretty hard to eliminate them from my game and my life. Uh, I tend to be a pretty anxious guy and uh, I felt like that was kind of contributing to it. So I've uh, only got a couple. I got a few handshakes I do with guys out in the hallways. Uh, me and Neeler give each other a little tap and uh, certain things I say to certain guys to get them going. But uh, other than that, I'm pretty much superstition free now. So can they kind of uh, start adding up on each other? If you have one, two, you keep adding yeah. more and more? You know what, I'm of the opinion that it can be kind of mentally exhausting. Um, I think it's a good way to wear, to wear yourself down. And uh, you know, for me, it's. It's always a bit of a reality check, you know, uh, you're an NHL player, you know, playing a good game is for the most part completely in control, whether you uh, put your right skate on first or your left skate on, what tally you use, that, that doesn't have a bearing on, uh, on kind of the grand scheme of things, it's all fluff, so it's up to you to kind of play well and be prepared. Imagine walking into an NHL dressing room filled with superstars such as Daniel Alfredson, Jason Spezza and Danny Heatley. Well that's exactly what happened to Nick Foligno when he came to the Ottawa Senators. Those lessons became invaluable as now Nick is the captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets. In this week's Out of Towner we caught up with Nick and he tells us exactly how those lessons help him going forward. Interesting scoring a goal back in a rink that really you played you, you called home for a while. What's it like? Oh, it always feels good. I mean, uh, I didn't have to do much on that one. It was just right off my tape and in the net. So it was a nice play by, by Wenny and then Gags. But uh, it's always nice to score uh, coming back here and, and then getting a big win. Is there something special about playing at the Canadian Tire Centre since you played so long here every time you come back? Is that just memories that pop up to you? Yeah, it's nostalgic for sure. I mean, uh, you come back and just the people, the familiar faces that are still here uh, five years later. and uh, Great people. I mean, I have nothing but great things to say about this organization and then my time here and the fans. And uh, So it's always a pretty special time coming back here. What would be your greatest memory of Canadian Tire Centre? Oh, man, there's, there's been quite a few. Uh, I don't know. There's just some been some highlight games. Um, you know, and just just the group of guys too. I was I was lucky to be on a pretty special teams uh, uh, when I was here with some great players. But I uh, just remember the fans and some playoff series here as well. Uh, probably scoring my first overtime goal is our uh, first sorry first uh, playoff goal. Uh, it was pretty special. So it's uh, those are always things you'll remember. 
You helped celebrate Chris Neal's 1,000th game as well. Uh, just talk about the bond you have with Chris Neal and uh, the show of classmanship you had with him. Yeah, you know what, he's, he's a guy that when I first came here, he, he kind of took me under his wing and taught me how to be a pro. And, uh, you know, you're forever grateful to those guys because it's, uh, it's easy to be selfish in this game, but there's special groups of guys that uh, that will always have a have a place in your heart when you're playing. And then he's one of them. There's a lot of guys I could probably go down the list when I first got here. So uh, he, he took care of me. Uh, it was hard on me at times, but but in a good way. And I think he's, he's helped you know, mold me into the player I am today. Being a young player for Ottawa now, let's say a veteran for Columbus, do you take that captaincy? It's got to be something you wear for pride, of course. Do you learn anything from Daniel Alverson being the, the one, maybe one of the guys that taught you some things? Oh, absolutely. I just uh, was lucky enough to see him chat with him for a bit. I, I think a lot of what I've learned, uh, you know, I tried to do because of him, uh, you know, and, and what he taught me and just his consistency as a player and as a leader and uh, and as a family man, too. It's something I'm, uh, I, I admire most about him is just his ways uh, off the ice more than anything. So uh, it was uh, always good to see him and then, you know, pick his brain a little bit and uh, hopefully I can be as good a captain as he was. Thanks, Dick. I really appreciate it. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode of OT The Hockey Show. Lots of scoring here between the guys from Soldier On and the Sens alumni. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Generation, Bobby Ryan back in. Kyle Turris takes off.